Hello, and welcome to a quick lesson about the y-intercept. So, the y-intercept is pretty self-explanatory. It is literally wherever a line intercepts the y-axis. Now, I'm sure you know from previous lessons and grade levels that the y-axis on a coordinate plane is the one that goes up and down. So, you're looking to find out where your line, whatever line you're dealing with, intercepts that axis. For example, let's say that I'm drawing a line right here. Yeah? So... If I put the line here, boom, I want to find out the y-intercept of this line. Well, just looking at it visually, I can tell, hey, this line goes through the y-axis of that point, and that point is 3. So you would say that this line has a y-intercept of 3. Let's try some other examples. Let's say, oh, let's say that we go ahead and we have another line. Let's just do one more. Let's just say that we have a line here. Okay, now let's find out what is the y-intercept of this line. Oh, all right, I can tell that the line intercepts the y-axis right there, and the value there is negative three. So you could say that your y-intercept for this line is negative three. Okay, easy so far. Let's carry on. Now, what happens what happens in a case where it's not drawn for you, where it's not so obvious, where you might have to find it out yourself? Let's say you're given one of the most common ways that you represent a line, an equation. y equals mx plus b. This is the easiest way to know how to draw a line. Your m value is always going to be your slope, and your b value is always going to be your y-intercept. So let's just go ahead and say, I give you an example, y equals 4x minus 3. Well, no, let's not do minus 3. Let's do minus 5. y equals 4x minus 5. Here, immediately, just by looking at it, any number at the very end, yeah, is the y-intercept. So for this line, you could say, hey, my y-intercept is negative 5. Boom, you're done. Let's go ahead and let's do another example. Let's say that you have y equals negative 6 over 7x plus 7. Again, once it's given to you in that form, y equals mx plus b, you can immediately just look at the end and say, hey, my y-intercept is 7. So you know exactly where you would plot that y-intercept on the line. So for the last example, the y-intercept would be right there. And for the first example, your y-intercept would be at negative 5, right there, yeah? That's pretty much it. Now, you may get some questions where they try and be sneaky, and they don't really tell you what the y-intercept is, but they give you enough information to figure it out. So let's say that you get a question that says, hey, your slope is going to be negative 4, and a point on the line we're talking about is going to be 2, comma, 6. Work out what the y-intercept is. In this case, you can just go ahead and write the formula again. y equals mx plus b. Yeah? You know that your slope is 4, so you can just go ahead and plug that in right away. y equals 4x plus b. Now, the problem is you want to find that y-intercept. You need to find out what it is, but you have too many other things you don't know right now. You also have a y and an x, so what do you plug in for them? Take that point you were given and plug it in. So, in this point, x comma y, the 2 is the x value. So go ahead and replace the x in this equation with 2, and then the 6 is the y value. Replace the y in this equation with 6. So you can just go ahead and rewrite the equation now that you've plugged it in. Okay, and now you are left with 6 equals 4 times 2 plus b. Now you can just do some math and you're left with 6 equals 4 times 2 is 8 plus b. We treat this like a regular equation. So all we want to do is leave the b alone on its side. So to isolate the b, we do a negative 8. Negative 8, we're going to subtract 8 from the right, and we're doing the exact same thing to the left, and we're left with our final answer of b equals negative 2. So, that's your final answer. You have it. b equals negative 2, so, on the coordinate plane, b would be right there. 